Now we first saw this at Goodwood, the BMW i4. And to say it caught our eye, well, that's an understatement. This is BMW's first electric car, aimed squarely at driving dynamics. Now the question is, does it offer that? I'm Ben Quirk, welcome to Planet Auto. Hello Harry. Introducing the BMW i4. Let me start by saying, what a car. Now we've been on a micro road trip and we thought we'd test the economy, see what kind of range you got, things like the heaters on. So we drove down to Liverpool and that was yesterday. When we arrived in Liverpool, we'd used seven miles of range and that's 72 miles. I mean, that just puts things into context. The way this regens, the way it uses its technologies. I mean, for a start, it's the fifth gen of E-Drive. That's what we first saw on the BMW i3 and the i8. Groundbreaking cars, if there ever were any. And just look where they are now. Yeah, they've had a glut of SUVs, but now we're starting to see things like this. And it's built on the CLA, which is cluster architecture. It's a modular platform and it supports rear wheel drive and X drive. Also, here's the clever bit. Combustion, hybrid and full electric. When you look at a car, say the Nissan Leaf, you have things like boot lifts. Whereas with this, they seem to have just done it really cleverly. Now, when it comes to batteries, there's one. It's around 88 kilowatts. The thing is, that will give it, I think it's around a 340 mile range. Now in the real world, I'd say that's closer to 290. It's got a lower center of gravity. It's got thinner batteries and it's weight. Well, that staggered me. It's just over two. They've also made the chassis tighter, more rigid. And for the first time, it's rear wheel drive. So it offers as close to say, an old school BMW experience as you can get. Now it's not 50-50 weight distribution. It's closer to 45-55. But when you're driving it, it does feel well balanced. But you can still chuck it around a bit. You can actually get a true M car. Yes, an electric true M car called the M50 dual motors so one on the front axle and one on the rear now that pulls 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds torque i think is around 800 newton meters now ours is the e-drive 40 this can also pick up its feet Not quite as quick as that but it pulls 0 to 60 in around five and a half because it's an electric car it's instant power and the way it delivers it it seems to have like a broad rev range which is a strange thing to say when you're talking about full evs but until you drive it well, you, I don't think you'll actually know what I mean. I've driven a lot of electric cars and this one, well, it stands out. You've got the Sport, you've got the M Sport like us, and you've got the true M. And you can spec up left, right and centre. Comfort packages, audio packages, advanced safety. Now prices start at just under 50,000 and that's for a Sport with the E-Drive 35 powertrain. This is the E40, so this retails for around 60,000. Now with options, Ours is closer to 64, but when we take a look inside, you'll see what that money buys you. It is all singing and dancing. It even has the latest iDrive system. Now, if this isn't going to cut it for you and you want the true M car, well, as far as electric goes, then you could go for the M50 and that retails for just over 70,000. But that, that's an animal. You're either going to love this or hate it. I prefer it to be honest. It makes these stand out. I think the one thing it does need is a side mounted number plate, a bit like an Alfa Romeo, and then that would show off the face. But for some reason, there's a lot of people that just haven't gelled with it, and I've got absolutely no clue why. But it's one of those cars that you'll look at in say 20 years and go, that was the right direction to go. Apart from that, it just looks very BMW. Lovely sculpture, the mixes of colours, I symbol here and this is Brooklyn grey. I think it's one of the best colours to be honest. We also have the shadow line package which adds black elements say here inside the headlamps. It's also part of the side. To be honest it makes the car look far more sporty. Automatic LED lights and if the individual standard LED lights don't cut it you could always go for laser lights. They're also adaptive and they're all singing and dancing, as you'd expect. Safety, I think it's got about 30 safety systems. Everything from lane mitigation to AEB to collision detection and everything in between, including 360 camera. That's the thing, there's so much with this car. 
I'd be stood here literally for two hours telling you about every element. As for warranties, well it's three year, but you can extend it. We've got the M adaptive suspension, but as standard, you get air suspension. Just look at the bonnet. Interestingly, it's partial clamshell, but it slopes into the headlamps and it's got almost like an arrow point. Flared wings, but interestingly, no arch extensions and it just gives it a really clean look. Combine that with these M Sport wheels, they're 19 inch and they've got a decent profile tyre. Thing is, you don't have to go for these. You could even go for 20s and the red calipers. It's a real looker. What a driving experience and smile inducing. It's one of those cars that you could roam Europe. Everything like this may look cool, but it's all for efficiency because when you've got an electric car, the one thing you want is lots of range. Yes, coupes are traditionally two doors with a boot, whereas this is four with a tailgate. The interesting thing is, there's no chrome and no roof bars, but yet again, that just gives it a really clean look. I mean, you'd be forgiven for looking at this and saying, this is a petrol model, especially with a filler cap here, which obviously is where you charge it. Decent sturdy hinge and very easy to open. Just press this button. It'll home charge, it'll type two, and it'll rapid charge up to, I think it's just over 200 kilowatts. Now with speeds like that, it means you can get around 110 miles range in about 10 minutes. Type two, it's gonna be 13 or 14 hours on say a seven and a half kilowatt wall box. And to make it nice and easy, BMW have their own app as well. So you can check status, charging, you can precondition. There's a world of things in that app. Power folding door mirrors, blind spot detection and keyless entry. If you've noticed, no button. So you just literally lift off. And the cluster bursts into life. And you probably recognise that tone. Yes, it's got the same acoustic suite that we found in the iX. Hans Zimmer. Just look at the interior. I mean, for a start, we've got frameless doors. You can see the Harman Kardon system, the Vanaska red leather and soft touches throughout. That's for climbing in. Well, it's child's play. I have to duck ever so slightly, but it's not a challenge. Interestingly, no grab handle, which is sad to see. Lovely sporty steering wheel with a cluster at this side and the infotainment, but the fact it's in one piece just makes it look really smart. You've also got the heads up display and lots more. This is where you set your auto lights. You can see your fogs, parking lights, and you can also adjust the height of your beam. Does that mean it'll tow? Well, yes, it'll tow 1600 kilos, which is a decent sized caravan. Now that's one thing I just didn't expect. And as you'd expect, electric seat with memory function on the door. And this is a lovely touch. Now that is a decent clump. Build quality, <laughs> no movement whatsoever. Solid. The design, well, it just really works. This is far more advanced than any of the previous versions. And I'm talking about 330E, etc., etc. Because essentially this is first of its kind. Spacious cabin, it's well insulated, and I am a fan of the black roof. The finishes, they've made it futuristic especially with the integration of the big screen. It's such a lovely car, sporty stitching. The touches of, I suppose it's like a satin finish. You will find hard plastics. The thing is, they're of a good quality. And the touches are blue, and it just tells you that it's BMW i. This leather, such a lovely finish. Supportive, buckety seats, and they're all electric, heated and ventilated. You can also do things like this. It's such a great driving position. You've got your adaptive cruise on here and you can go through your cluster on the right hand side. And yes, it is heated. It's also an M wheel. That's the thing. Everywhere you look, you see touches of M. Just take a look at the seat belt. And to be perfectly blunt, if you want an electric car that's got, say, a retro experience, you know, the rear wheel drive, etc., this is what you're going to be looking at moving forward. And don't poo poo it until you've driven it. I'm very troubled in what to actually say that's bad with it. I can't. I mean, no grab handle and no seat belt adjustment. Yeah, they have got rid of some of the rotaries, the air conditioning, that all works through here. The same with the heated seats, but you do have a rotary for your volume and you've got the demister buttons for the front and the rear. Driving modes, Sport, Comfort and Eco Pro. Electronic handbrake, the hill start assist. Yeah, it works well. Shifter. 
reverse neutral drive and if you knock it left it'll put it in brake mode which is essentially one pedal driving but adaptive regen too this it's always going to be one of my favorites it's so easy to use the infotainment little rotary with joystick elements infotainment responsive easy to use it also comes up and tells you what the car is doing for example efficient coasting charging battery Satellite navigation, DAB radio, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and lots of functionality. It's really simple to use. Cluster, nice and straightforward. Speedo on the left and on the right hand side, you can see the power when it's recharging and when it's drawing. You can have different information. You can big map, and you can also see your navigation in the heads up display. Your adaptive appears there, you can see the distance from the car in front, etc. etc. USB, 12 volt sockets, and cup holders. Oh box mood lighting currently it's blue but it does have some special characteristics that is excellent as you can see the red flashing let's take a look in the back lovely to see that you've got red calipers front and rear so yeah discs all round and yes they're both vented let's take a look in the back now that is a wide opening door also frameless that's one thing you can be sure of with a bmw the rear door cards almost mirror the front soft touches and padded areas and this venasca leather once again very nice now i've mentioned this is a rather advanced vehicle for example it uses over the air updates for its infotainment system now, the deeper you look into this you find more and more and more thing is it's not over complex it just makes the car better this looks like child's play I had to duck my head a little bit, but not bad at all. My hair does brush ever so slightly if I lean right back. And I suppose if you're a little taller than me, if you get a bit lower in your seat, then it shouldn't be a challenge. I can sit comfortably like this. And I can see out the window. That's always a bonus. I can get my feet under the seat and a decent bit of legroom. Seats. Well, finished as nicely as the front. They're comfortable. They're supportive. No, they're plush. Sadly, these aren't heated, but I can see inserts. It makes me wonder if that's an option. And M Sport seat belts, tri zone, USBs, and some vents. On many cars, this is plastic, but no, padded. The one thing it's missing is a sunroof. It is a little bit dark. It's not surprising with this privacy glass, but the fact that you've got an extra window here, and it's a relatively big back window, even though it's slanting. It's not as dark as it could be, so that's good to see. Centre rear light, cup holders, yes. Strangely, grab handles only on the rear. Isofix points and airbags around the vehicle. Let's take a look at the back. Oh, one last thing, illuminated footwells. Always a welcome addition. Now, if this isn't a commanding look, I don't know what is. Look at this. It's like a mini ducktail spoiler. It's a pity it's not further back and then it would have been true ducktail. But it looks smart. The thing is, it's not overdone. And the shape of the rear lenses. Now this just takes me back to the BMW i8 and they are LED. Also from this angle, you can see the flare on the rear arch. This is one fat car. And finally, rear diffuser styling. It's a lot more pronounced than some of the other vehicles. So it does make it look rather sporty and the combination of colours just adds to it. We've also got parking sensors, cross traffic alerts and a reversing camera. Power tailgate. Now that's rapid. Super safe. Love it. Decent sized boot to be honest. Bit of a boot lip but nothing to write home about. It's got your charging cables. That looks like inflation kit. Number plate. You don't see that very often in electric cars. Encouragement to tow something. Now you're losing the plot, aren't you, Ben? There's no tow bar. Well, that's where you're wrong. There's a little button here. Press it once. It takes probably about a minute to come up. But the other thing is, it doesn't come to there. It comes up and fully locks in place. Other vehicles, they come to so far and then you have to lock it. But this is now solid and ready for towing. As for putting away, well illuminated, storage points on the left and the right. Under here, ooh, extra storage. You'll easily get a fair amount of shopping in there and at least two suitcases, and that's the big ones. Now, to be honest, it's rather spacious and all the housing here, that's the thing. 
when you get a BMW, everything is pretty much covered. It's all well trimmed plastic where it can be. Looks like an MDF parcel shelf. Just strange not to have a set of six by nines in. Lovely touch. 12 volt socket and shopping bag hook. And it is pretty solid. And has rim points. Now, it's a decent size. Let's drop the seat to remove, lift the back up and then just slide out. Same to reseat. Just hook over and push down. Now you probably could do it from the back, but you'd have to stretch around a little. Therefore it's easier to do it from the back seat. Lays almost flat too. Now that seriously increases the space. Let's take a look under the bonnet. The release is here. And in true BMW style, pull twice. I will never get bored of being met by that. There's not even a latch. Because you pull it twice, you can just literally do that. Shame to see there's no front. But apart from that, well that certainly leaves a lot to the imagination. However, you can see where you top up your wipers. So that's good. It's got intelligent battery heating and a heat pump. It also looks like this has an inspection system, a bit like Dorothy. So you can open the bonnet fully open if you need to. So, then just push. Welcome to the driving section. Now the bottom line is, a normal section just isn't going to cut it. So the best bet is to tune into the road trip. However, here's a taster. But the interesting thing about this is, it's due to its weight, which we expect with an electric car, but because it's rear wheel drive like classic BMW, it's, it feels like a real driver's car. And that's what they've aimed for, to make a dynamic, well, electric car. Because everything else they've put out has either been quirky or essentially an SUV. And slowly started to dab off the acceleration. So when it comes to the regen in this, what it does is it detects cars in front, it detects bend, and well, it essentially drives for you. And that's without adaptive. Battery warranty, seven years. When it comes to the car's warranty, three years. There you have it. You've got a taster. Here's a link to the road trip. Thanks for joining us.